Hey everybody, this video is going to show you the digital true flow grid by TEC, the Energy Conservatory, as well as the DG8 precision manometer and how you can use that to predict static pressure changes when you change out a system. So whether you're going up, going down, changing airflow, it's really important to know is your filter, is your coil, is your ductwork going to be compatible and make sure that you're in the safe zone in terms of static pressure. This video will cover the process of evaluating existing ductwork for its ability to handle a different or higher airflow when completing an equipment system replacement project. This process can also be used for setting a new airflow for existing equipment. Let's first walk through how to evaluate existing ductwork and then how to predict or forecast performance with a new airflow. We'll then demonstrate how to use the forecasting feature inside the TrueFlow app to complete the process. By the end of this video, you'll understand how to test and evaluate existing ductwork and how to use your measured system airflow and static pressure results from your test in data to make smart and fast decisions about the expected airside performance of HVAC upgrades and replacements. Let's get started with setting up a new test by making our way through the TrueFlow app. For the use of forecasting, we'll need to select either the system airflow and static pressure or the air max with TrueFlow workflow. Let's advance to the next few selections based on what we know about the existing system. Select furnace, select upflow, select air filter location. In our scenario, we have a filter grill, which means we need to turn the newly appeared toggle to on for separating the pressure measurement for filter and return duct. This toggle must be on to get the forecasting feature. Next is the cooling capacity. This input should come from the outdoor unit. By default, the TrueFlow app has pre-selected the maximum total external static pressure for both heating and cooling. For advanced users, it's recommended to toggle on the manufacturer's max TESP in the app workflow settings. The app will prompt you to enter the manufacturer's max TESP, or total external static pressure, in the system details screen. This data point is typically found in the original equipment manufacturer's literature. When you adjust the TESP input, the color ranges on the TESP dial and the sub-pressures dials will change. This allows the dials to reflect new performance expectations based on that target. Returning back to our system details screen, our next input is return air temperature. A good place to find this input is from the thermostat mounted in the home. The final input is moving the cooling climate slider to the desired SCFM per ton. Instructions below the slider are given to advise your selection. Let's get started with our system airflow and static pressure test. This test provides us with detailed system data, including airflow, total external static pressure, filter and grill pressure drop, return plenum pressure, indoor coil pressure drop, and supply plenum pressure. Using the image created from your system details selection will advise on where to take these measurements. Once you've captured the normal system operating pressures, leave the supply pressure probe in the supply plenum and install the grid in place of the filter. Once installed, select Take Measurement. Once completed, select Continue and Save to advance to the diagnostic screen. 
Each measurement is represented by a dial. These dials give visual feedback about the performance of each part of the system. Now let's launch forecast mode. At the bottom of the test and screen, you'll see two options, forecast and report. Tap forecast to begin predicting future system performance. Forecasting uses the Bernoulli equation, meaning it takes your existing ductwork data and projects how it will respond to new conditions like higher airflow or new equipment. Before continuing, you'll be shown the forecasting detail screen. This explains that the app does not perform load calculations. It's designed to predict airflow performance, not to select equipment capacity. The first forecasting option is to change airflow target, perfect for when you're adjusting blower speed or target CFM, but keeping the same equipment. On this screen, you'll see two main dials, airflow and TESP. You can use the airflow slider to set the new flow rate. As you adjust it, the TESP dial automatically responds, showing you the projected system pressure at the new flow rate. Blue indicators on the dial show forecasted values. Gray indicators on these dials represent your recorded test in data. They don't move. They simply show how the system performed during testing. A helpful visual to compare where the system started. Once you set your new airflow rate, tap Continue to view updated subpressure dials. These include return, filter, coil, and supply pressure drops. Again, blue dials mean forecasted values. Gray triangles show your test in values, and any dials in yellow or red will trigger suggested actions that a technician can take to improve the system. Now, time for the system replacement workflow. Starting back at the forecasting options screen, the second forecasting path is system replacement. This allows you to simulate how a new piece of equipment will perform on the existing ductwork. After selecting this mode, you'll choose the type of indoor equipment. Air handler with internally mounted coil, electric furnace with externally mounted coil, or gas furnace with externally mounted coil. Your new equipment selection will have a new blower max TESP. Enter this static pressure input and select continue. Now it's time to forecast the airflow performance of the new system. Start by adjusting the capacity slider. This should be based on a proper load calculation. Next, adjust the filter and grill pressure drop based on what you expect for the performance of the new filter. If you don't plan to replace the filter, move the slider close to the gray triangle because that indicates the performance of the existing filter. Finally, adjust the indoor coil pressure drop based on the manufacturer's literature at the correct airflow for the new system. If you're just replacing a furnace and plan to reuse the indoor coil, move the slider close to the gray triangle because that indicates the performance of the existing indoor coil. Again, the gray triangles, they show how the original components would perform at the new airflow. A great visual to see if a coil or filter upgrade is necessary. If your forecasted TESP is too high, the best choice would be to try reducing pressure by selecting a filter with lower pressure drop. A second option would be selecting an indoor coil with a lower pressure drop. If TESP is still too high after adjusting for the lowest pressure drop available for the filter and indoor coil, then your existing duct system is not capable of the required airflow without renovations to the ductwork. At this point, you have two choices. The first is duct renovations of the return or supply duct based on the subdial pressures. Reading this would generally mean upsizing ductwork, improving fittings, reducing bends, that sort of thing. The second would be to bring down the capacity needs by means of permanent load reduction work, which would be things like air sealing the space, new insulation. These would allow you to downsize the equipment. Once the sliders are set, then select Continue to advance the app. This will generate projected airflow and TESP readings along with updated subpressures. Again, blue indicators in the dials equal forecasted mode projections. If any subpressures are in the yellow or red zones, the Problem Detected section will flag them and offer advice on how to fix them. For this install, we're going to show a TESP improvement by adjusting the filter slider to a lower pressure drop. Finally, you can generate a report from this forecast. It's labeled clearly as forecast report, 
making it easy to present, save, or share with others. Thanks for watching the Digital True Flow Grid by TEC and the DG8 Precision Manometer make it really easy for you not only to visualize the data, but to actually take action on that data before you swap a piece of equipment out. Thanks to my friends from TEC, the Energy Conservatory, especially Chris Hughes for putting this video together. Find out more about TEC, the Digital True Flow Grid, and the DG8 Manometer at energyconservatory.com. Thanks for watching. If you're willing, give this video a thumbs up and drop us a comment. Don't forget to hit that bell icon to stay updated with all of our future videos. And as a quick reminder, HVAC School isn't just a YouTube channel. Dive deeper with us at our main website, hvacrschool.com. Curious for more knowledge on the go? We've got you covered. Tune into the HVAC School podcast available on all your favorite podcast apps. And while you're at it, join our thriving Facebook group. Also, don't miss out on our free mobile applications available for both iPhone and Android. We're all about community. Vortex. Bytex.